Hey guys, this video is going to talk a little bit more about scatter plots. Please make sure you take notes. All right, so in class, you have already kind of learned what a scatter plot looks like. So a scatter plot is basically um, a graph that shows how two different sets of data relate. Okay, and the points are always scattered. So if I have my x, y axis, you know, I'm working with two things, maybe um, minutes I study and scores on my math test. So I'm working with two pieces of data and I'm graphing the points and then I'm seeing if I see any kind of relationship and this makes a scatter plot. So in this video we're going to learn about um, some different words that go with scatter plots and what the relationship means in scatter plots. All right, so after you make a scatter plot, one thing that um, you tend to need to do is to look and see how the two things you are comparing relate to each other. So whatever you graphed, you want to see what type of relationship or how those two things relate to each other. So there are three types of relationships you might see in scatter plots, and you want to put these in your notes. The first one is called a positive correlation. So what that means is as one thing increases, as one of your data increases, so does the other one. So as the x value goes up, so does the y value. An example of that might be as, your, um, as you study more, so as your time goes up, your test scores might go up. That would be a positive correlation. Okay, the second type of relationship that you might see in a scatter plot is called a negative correlation. And a negative correlation means as one of your values increases, so as the values start going up, the other value decreases. So as your x value goes up, the y value goes down. An example of that would be the more time you spend on Twitter, um, the lower your test scores were. So that would be a negative correlation. As your minutes on Twitter went up, your test scores went down. That's called a negative relationship or negative correlation. The third type is called no correlation. That means um, the two things you're looking at, the two sets of data, they are not related at all. There's no pattern. An example of that might be um, your age and then how many siblings you have. Okay, those two data sets have no relationship at all. It doesn't matter your age, that has no impact on how many siblings you have. So that would be no relationship or no correlation. Now, two words that you're going to see a lot and they're interchangeable, that means they mean the same thing. Um, when I say correlation, another word for that is association. And again, those, jo those both just mean um, how do they relate or it's like a relationship. So you're going to be looking at graphs and you're going to be trying to tell what type of relationship do you see. All right, so I have three examples. I want you to push pause and I want you to see if you can figure out what type of correlation each of these scatter plots has. Um, so look at your notes. Try it out when you're ready, push play. All right, so the first graph, okay, kind of look at this. So it looks like as my temperature, as I go to the right, my temperature keeps getting higher. So my temperature is increasing. As my temperature increases, what's happening to the sales? So look at the points. It looks like they keep going up. So as the temperature gets higher, your ice cream sales keep getting higher. So when you see both of the values going up, that's called a positive correlation. So this one is a positive correlation. And you can kind of see that if I try to draw a fitted line here through the points, I can see that line looks like it's going up. Again, that's called a positive correlation. Okay, the second one. Okay, if I look at this one, as my number of classes increases as I go this way, so as the um, number of classes you miss goes up, what happens to your exam scores? Well, they start up here. And then it looks like they keep going down, down, down as you miss more classes. So as your number of missed classes goes up, your exam scores goes down, that's called a negative correlation or negative association. Okay, and then the third type, okay, if we look at this one, it shows your shoe size and your IQ. Now, if you look at the points, they are just scattered everywhere. There doesn't seem to be any kind of pattern. I could not draw a fitted line in these points. So this one is called no correlation. There is no relationship between the two sets of data. There's no relationship between your shoe size or your IQ. All right, another thing that we are going to use to describe scatter plots 
um, we're always going to try to describe the direction of scatter, plat, scatter plots. That's basically what we just kind of said. So if you look at this first graph here, um, it looks like the direction is, well, how are the points going? Well, it's a positive correlation because it's going up. If you draw a fitted line, you kind of can see your line's going up as you go from left to right. That's called a positive correlation. Okay, if I look at my second one, looks like my points are going down from left to right. That's called a negative correlation. And then here, again, is a picture of no correlation, no pattern. Okay, the next thing that we're going to describe with scatter plots is something called the strength. So basically, what you're trying to describe is how strong of a relationship do the two sets of data have? Do they have a really strong relationship? Do they really, really relate to each other? That would be strong. Are they weak or are they moderate? So I'll just kind of show you what that would look like. So let's look at this first graph. Okay. If you look at these points, they fall really close to that line of best fit. Almost every single point is on it. This would be called a strong association. It's also negative because it's going down. Okay. So that's called a strong. That's its strength. Okay. Now if you look at the second one, you can see the points are going down. They're not so close to each other though. I mean, the, the, the dots are a little bit further apart. They still show a good relationship. So the more you spend training, the less infections, you know, it, it is definitely going down. It's just not as strong as this first one. So this is called a moderate or a median or a medium association. And again, it's negative because it's going down. Okay, the last one, um, they looked at people's SAT scores and their college G GPA. And the points were all over the place if you look at these. So there wasn't a real strong association. It was going up, it looks like. So the, as your SAT score got higher, so did your college GPA. In general, it looks like that. But these points are so far spread apart, that's called a weak association. So again, that's how you describe the strength. And we'll practice that more in class tomorrow. All right, the next thing that we're going to describe with a scatter plot is something called the, its form, okay? So it's form. All right, so I just drew a scatter plot on the first one. And basically, you kind of look and see, well, I can tell it's going up. And if I drew a fitted line, I drew it through it, it looks like it's making a line, right? It's going up in a linear fashion. So this form, I would say it's linear, okay? I would also say, well, it's positive because it's going up. And I would say this is a pretty strong, okay? The points are pretty close following it. Now, here would be an example of one that is not linear. So maybe I have a scatter plot of my points, and it starts kind of going down. It sort of looks like a line, but then it starts curving. Okay, so it started curving. That is not linear. That would be called nonlinear. So that is its form. It is nonlinear. I would still say it looks like it's still um, going down, so I'd still say it's negative. And it still looks pretty strong. Just kind of look at it. It's still... It's pretty strong correlation there, but it's nonlinear. It's got like a curved, okay, if it's curved like that, you don't draw a fitted line. So don't draw a fitted line if it looks like that. Um, even though I just kind of, I just drew one just to show you the pattern. Okay, and then the second to last thing that you always want to describe when you have a scatter plot, if there are any outliers. So when you're looking at two sets of data, a lot of times they'll relate really well to each other, but there'll be one piece of data or one one um, thing that doesn't relate to all the other ones, it's not even close. That's called an outlier. So if you look at this one, okay, it looks like it's going down, it's linear, it's negative, and it looks like they all are, the points are pretty close. So it's a good, strong correlation, but there's one point that kind of stands out. That's called an outlier. So basically, that's a point that doesn't fit like the pattern of all the other points. Okay, this, this relationship still has a pattern. I'd still say it's negative, it's strong to moderate, um, it's linear, it's pretty strong. It just has one outlier, and you would want to list that. You'd say it has one outlier, and you can either give the coordinates, so I would say it's about 2 comma 2, or you can circle it or point it out somehow. So that is an outlier. It's a point that doesn't fit all the rest of the data. Okay, and then one other vocab word that you'll need to know when looking at scatter plots is called a cluster. So basically, a cluster is a group of points or data that are close together. So it's like one little group of data that's all super close together. So if I look at this scatter plot, 
you might see the points in the middle here. They're kind of spread out. They're going, they're going up, obviously, but then I see this, these clusters of data. So this would be a cluster of data. There's a bunch of points all right together. Here's another little cluster of data, a bunch of points right, right together. So those are called clusters. Again, if you're looking at a scatter plot, you'd want to say there's a couple clusters of data and just kind of describe where they're at. Okay, then I would still say this is linear. It's going up, so it's positive. Um, and it's pretty, I would say, moderate to strong as well for the strength. All right, so when you describe a scatter plot, there are four things you need to try to describe. So I want you to put these in your notes. These are the four things you need to try to remember to describe. The first one is um, its form. And form, again, just means is it linear or is it nonlinear? So linear or nonlinear. You just want to list that for every single scatter plot. The next one is strength. Strength means is it strong? Is there a really strong relationship between what you're comparing? Is it moderate or is it weak? Okay, so those are the three strengths we tend to use. Okay, the next one is direction. Basically, that means is it going up or down? In the words we use for that, is it positive or negative? So is there a positive correlation or is there a negative correlation? Okay, and then the last one is outliers or clusters. Just describe if there are any. Okay, so you just need to say, well, are there any outliers? Are there any clusters? Why might that be? And we'll look at that more when we look at some actual scatter plots. All right, so really quickly, I'm going to describe this correlate, these um, scatter plots. So first thing, I would say it's linear. This first one is. So linear, um, it's positive, it's going up. I would say um, it's, I would say this is moderate. The points are a little farther away from the scatter plot, and I don't see any outliers or clusters. Okay, the second one, this is definitely nonlinear. Okay, so I would write nonlinear. The strength is pretty strong. Look at the points. They all kind of follow a pattern. Okay, I would not draw a fitted line for this. Um, and it's, it's both positive and negative because it's going up and down, so I wouldn't describe that at all. And it doesn't look like there are any outliers. Okay, I'd like you to go ahead and try to describe these three scatter plots. So please describe um, their form, their direction, uh, their strength, and if there are any clusters or outliers. Okay, so if you can describe those four things for all three of these problems, and we'll be checking those out tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher. Have a good night. Bye.